Now that we finished our shirt, we've added a little bit of detail, we've done our hair, we're going to talk about how to add the value of the skin. And this is one of the more difficult parts of this project. So in order to be able to see where those shapes will be, we're actually going to play with the contrast of the image. So you click the image, and then that will make up here replace image and format Im options appear. We're going to click format options. And here we have lots of different uh, choices. We want to go to adjustments. And we just want to up our contrast a little bit. Now this is going to blow out our colors a little bit, but it shows us a little bit more the shape of each of the values. Now you don't have to keep that, of course, but keeping this open gives you the option to peek at different shapes. So we can even pump it up quite a bit. And then we can look at this, um, what's called like a topographical map of the face and use this just to trace out the shapes. So we're gonna go back up to our polyline. And the first thing we're gonna grab is if this is our middle tone, we're gonna look for our shadows first. And again, just like your hair, Feel free to break up the silhouettes of shapes by adding that little zigzag edge. So there's one shadow area. There's another shadow area. I see a little bit around this nose, on this side of the nose, this nostril. And I might wanna zoom in so I can get more details. Remember the further you zoom in, the closer you can put the dots together and then the more details the edges will have. And then I see that I have some up here And I might even put a little bit of a shadow behind my eyebrow. Now I'm gonna look into the neck, do the same thing. And I'm going to fit it. So that's just my first set of values. Now I'm obviously not going to keep the colors, these yellows and oranges. I'm going to click reset. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the pieces by pressing and holding the shift key. I'm going to select all of those pieces and I'm going to make them transparent. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose with my eyedropper tool one of the colors from inside that shadow area. Then I'm gonna copy it, paste it, control V. I'm gonna make that transparent and I'm gonna group them, control Alt G. Then I'm going to slide them over, 
the big thing is every time I add something to my face now, I'm going to want to make sure it sits behind my hair. Uh, so I'm going to click Arrange, Order, Send Backwards, and keep pushing Control y until it's sitting behind my hair. Speaking of, it looks like I should have had my skin in front of the shirt a little bit more. Or what's happened is that this little part of my shadow has gone too far off the face. And so this is gonna happen more and more. Um, what we're gonna do this time is we're going to double click the shape. We're just gonna tweak by sliding over some of those points. And if anything looks funny over here, the highlight area, just going to slide that over a little bit more so it hides behind the face. All right, so that is our first shape, and we're still going to have to go in and tweak to make sure everything's going behind the hair where we want it to go behind the hair. like so. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop up that contrast a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go back through and this time I'm gonna get my first set of middle tones. So that'll be this yellow. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And what I'll probably have to do is place this layer behind my shadow layer. Oh, and that's something that happens occasionally where you accidentally double click after doing all that work and you have to restart. Just control Z, control Z. Again, just tracing around all these shapes, making sure you don't accidentally double click.
All right, and now that we've gone through and we've gotten that first value, we can even go and get the middle tones around the mouth. Now this is gonna function almost like a placeholder for when we build the mouth, because we're gonna build that as a totally separate piece. A little bit of the chin shadow here. And a little bit of the eyebrow shadow. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna fit it. We're gonna click the image, we're gonna reset it. We're gonna select all the pieces that we just made by pressing and holding the shift key. We're gonna get rid of their backgrounds. We're gonna make them transparent. And then we're gonna choose a color that will work well for them. Click custom. Control C, Control V. Now we have that. We're gonna slide it over and so that it makes sense with what we have before, we're gonna send it behind our shadow areas. Now that's looking a little separate from our skin color. So the way around this is actually a little bit different. What we can do is click custom on that color and then we can up what's called the transparency. And this means we'll be able to see the color through it and it softens it a little bit, which is pretty helpful. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is our highlight. So again, we're gonna click that. We're gonna up the contrast. We're gonna play around with that until our highlights are really clear. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna select all of the highlights. So I have a little bit of one on my nose. I have one on my cheek here. I have one on my cheek there. I have one around my lips and my cupid's bow. And one there, and maybe a little bit of one there. Then again, we're gonna click view fit. We're going to press and hold the shift key to select all of the pieces I just colored. We're gonna make sure we make them translucent. We're gonna group them. We're gonna click our image, we're gonna reset it. We're gonna choose our highlight color. Control C, Control V, get rid of those highlights. And 
And then we're going to work to get those settled. But I can already see. that maybe we need to add a little bit more shadows and highlight shapes and maybe a little transparency to the highlight color. And that helps a little bit. Adding some crisp shadows will be very helpful. Um, and we will be able to do all that. But now at least we have the contours of our face. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is work on the lips, then the eyes, then the nose, then the eyebrows, and then finishing touches. So right now, just work on getting those values of your face.